Blog Talk Radio. That's hilarious. Um, we're doing things backwards <laughs> today, apparently. So let me ring the bell. What the hell? <laughs> oh, I no. Kind of sense, today is Sunday, July 2nd, 2017, and school is officially in, as you already heard, by the backwards. <laughs> 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 Same music. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. Somebody preset that. I I did, but I thought I hit the preset for the correct preset. But um, uh, you know, um, uh, welcome to Sun today's <laughs> show, and today is the Conscious Rapper Show. We'll be talking about all things conscious. And joining me today, as per normal, I am of course I'm Mitch, and I am joined today by the always pensive. Ant. <laughs> what up, what up? <laughs> <laughs> and the ever brooding Aaron. Aaron. Hello everyone. Hey. So um the definition of conscious rap or political hip hop or conscious hip hop and IE conscious MCs. Um, is defined as socially conscious as a, as a subgenre of hip hop that challenges the dominant culture, political, philosophical, and economic consensus and or comments on social issues and conflicts. Conscious hip hop is not necessarily overly political, but the two are sometimes used interchangeably. My issue, my one of my biggest issues about definitions of that, like even in Wikipedia, is that they talked about that and then they didn't talk about like Afrocentricity, which was like was a huge part of the conscious political landscape during the golden era. Like they don't like there's nothing in there about that, which is the oddest thing ever because it was like it got to the point where it was a fad. Mm, yeah, right. And I don't know if everybody knows anything about Common, of course, a quote-unquote conscious rapper who made the song I Used to Love Her. And, and he, he actually talks about it and I Used to Love Her. He talks about how, you know, hip-hop became um, Afrocentric during a certain time period. Mm. But, um, so... I actually think that that definition is a little too strict. I can see that. I think that conscious rappers and conscious hip hop is literally is just anything in the genre as a subgenre that is um, contemplative, i.e., that provokes thought or causes you to go into a prolonged state of thought and maybe makes you look at things in a deeper way. I think that's all it takes. Yeah, that could be something as simple as um, talking about being a better father or a better husband. Exactly. That's why I don't like that like that limiting definition of, oh, like it has to be. So- I mean, some people would say that that's, that that's socially relevant too, but I mean, that's not really being, being the like. Back in my day, when Ed O'Gee and the Bulldogs made Be Your Father to Your Child, that's conscious. Right. Yeah, you can't dispute that. But that's kind of, that's kind of, hear me out. That's kind of my position on mentioning styles. Here but does he, is he, is <laughs> he, <laughs> anybody that has listened to the show now knows it takes, he goes from zero to like eight when it comes to bringing in D-Block to every conversation. And here we are, back at D-Block. <laughs> it's, it's the truth, it's the truth. Styles inspires deeper thoughts. But has he always done that? 
Uh, for the most part, yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Go, yeah. When last time you listened to a gangster and a gentleman? No, I'm saying, like, he's always, I mean, folks can tell you Willie D has done that too. Yeah. I don't know about that though. <laughs> I mean, I like, Willie D has had some some moments when he made me think, but his overall moments have been like pretty right. gutter. It's yeah, like, it's one of those. It's one of those things. Like I said before, like that's not what Styles is known for. Known like even for. though he even though he may or may not do it, like that's not what he's known for. I mean, he's known I, as the ghost. That's why he's known as the ghost. I feel as though this is one of those dizzy Gillespie plays the sax moments. I wouldn't. He I'm, might, I'm, he I might agree be able to play the sax, like, but is he known for playing the sax? I think he's known for saying just really, really like he. Re, you know what? I always say Styles. He reminds me of Willie D. I don't <laughs> know, like. He really does yeah. though. Yeah. In fact, in fact, level. like. Yeah, in fact, I think you could trace like a lot of D Block's energy back to um people like uh 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 the Ghetto Boys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, of course. And I mean, I That's love the Ghetto Boys, but we, I mean, we, the one that's the most contemplative in that group is not Willie D. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, does that mean Jada Kisses is, is is more? No, I mean, well, if you're gonna put it, if you're gonna put it that way, um, I, I, like I might have to agree with I might have to agree with Anthony if you're gonna put it that okay. way. <laughs> I'm not saying he's a conscious rapper. He, he's a pretty, pretty yeah. <laughs> yeah, he more he more likely in that group. He more likely to be that person. Yeah. Okay, so 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 given our more broader definition, just throwing some names out there, mm-hmm. um. Who, like who, and we don't have to get into a discussion of top because you know we're gonna do our um, our last show in the month is about um, our top ten, you know, our, our our top list for conscious rappers. But okay, so we all know people like if, if I throw out somebody like Common, of course. Uh huh. Uh-huh. That's probably the enemy. Of course. Yeah. Most deaf, of course. What about? Ice Cube. I would say, yeah. That's by that's by today's standards, though. Like you even said that before yourself. And, like if Tupac was alive today, he'd be seen more as a conscious rapper than um anything. Yeah. I would argue that he was he was he was half conscious at one point. The Cube or Pop? Pop. Well, I'm like this. Cube was conscious. He was political. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he he said some outlandish shit, he made horrible like he made nappy dugout. Let's get real here. <laughs> but that's a social issue. <laughs> yeah. Nappy dugout ain't no fucking social issue. It's a song about about having gang sex with a girl. <laughs> well, you know, Cube is Cube. That's not a. Uh, that's not really a um, surprise with Cube though, because his his music is more of a crossbreed of Ghetto Boys meets Public Enemy. I think it is very much so. I think, but and we've had this conversation before too, Aaron and Aaron's Aaron's always saying, "We're not going to do this show yet," but we are. We're, we're always talking about this fucking bromantical shit. This this bromance, this bro- <laughs> the whole shit all the time, and West Coast hip hop. Is very bro over whole centric. On me over hoes, man. But All the time. Yeah, that's the gang culture, though. It is. So they talk about the the gang and the hustler culture is big there. So they they do a whole like so their version of social consciousness is always going to be about something that has a, a swinging dick. They don't make mm-hmm. a lot of music about you know treating women right. They their shit is always about. How men get treated. It just it is what it is. Yeah. True. You know, like their songs about women are, are you know, more like it ain't no fun. And and we all know that. Yeah. 
And then behind the scenes, they're all married with kids, though. But, you know, I digress. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about somebody like Killer Mike? His music mm. isn't always the most conscious. Yeah, I wouldn't call like I wouldn't even call like the uh the whole Red and the Jewel series. I wouldn't really call that a conscious uh series. No. Just Why not? <laughs> huh? Why not? That's more like it's, not, it's one of those things like where we um where it's not you know, it's not like a consistent uh theme. theme. Not from what I hear what anyway, I hear. maybe y'all hear something else. Okay. It's like and? beats bars, beats yeah. bars and, and concepts here and there. Right, so yeah, we think, yeah. Like, so we think Killer Mike is more of a... He's, he's definitely a conscious person. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's one of those people he recognizes that he can be conscious, but he doesn't always want to be that. I think he's one of those people, too. Um, But, I mean, he does, he does tons on the back end. Like, he's more like what Ant maybe be saying about South T, but I would say to the hill. I think mm-hmm. he's a lot less detrimental sometimes. And, you know, he's not going to... I've never heard him just. I mean, well, some of the stuff he's done on, on um, with with like with the Dungeon Family sometimes comes off a little bit raw. He, yeah, he gets a little raw. <laughs> he gets a little raw in there. Um, but I don't know that that he's just like like gonna be like really, really, really saying anything horribly wrong. Terribly wrong, but don't get me wrong, because I mean y'all, y'all know I have killer, killer Mike um, bias, I like killer Mike. Like it's like I was gonna say, I was gonna say with a yell, like love killer Mike. <laughs> 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 what about um, what about Eminem? Uh, <laughs> funny you said that because that thought crossed my mind. I thought it crossed my mind, but I was like, nah, I'm not going there. Yeah, he he another one though that you know he he do he do something every once in a while that's like, oh, that was dope that he talked about that. <laughs> I mean, do you think his whole overall like his overall career? Nah, nah. Conscious. Nah, that's not what he's known for at all. <laughs> Kendrick. I think so. Yeah. Nicole? Yeah, I think. Nicole? Yeah, I think. I think without a doubt, <laughs> both of them without a doubt. Would you Would you say the woo is conscious? See, you know what I was thinking about that before, and that one is just it. it I want to say, but because the woo, I want to say anybody who's on that fucking five percent of shit gets thrown in there because, like, we all know Nas is. Uh huh. Yeah. Nas has a fucking scholarly book written about his first album. <laughs> There's, you know, like like Michael Eric, I write long ass books. Dyson <laughs> dedicated a whole intellectual piece to him. So that's kind of what I was saying. But like people like Nas, we already know. People like Rakim, we already know because they drop, you know, they drop these mind bombs on you. Wu Tang. Mm-hmm. Wu Tang has has dropped jewels here and there. Wu Tang also talks about selling drugs a lot, like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. They do. But I mean, can it be? I was gonna ask this too. Like, is gangster rap considered conscious because that's the lifestyle that they was living? That's what I'm trying to figure out because Wu will fall into that category. What about? And you know, maybe I've heard people. Piece. I've heard prodigy. I've heard people say that. Before. My beat. My no. Beat. No. I, <laughs> but <laughs> I, see, they they like walk the line. Who Wu Tang? It it depends on what you yeah. listen to. Like I prodigy, but prodigy go too far sometimes. Like if you are if you a heavy fan like I am, like you listen to like some of his solo joints and he get into all that conspiracy theory shit. Yeah. But I feel like that's what conscious rappers do. They do a lot of that. A lot of that. Yeah, that's part of what it is. Yeah, but you gotta get into another part of Mob Deep to hear that. Like you can't just listen to a regular Mob Deep album and hear that. I feel you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. 
that's I don't know. That's how I used to. I've asked myself that like a lot of times about Wu Tang because I mean, you know, it's, it's one thing to get on stage and say Wu Tang is for the kids, for the children. <laughs> yeah. It's another thing to listen to Wu Tang content <laughs> and hear you know them talk about. They they talk about. I mean, they talk about you know about respecting your old earth. You know, yeah. Yeah. About building your communities. But yeah, they, they talk about, about they talk about all that. But time, what I always so I what I always <laughs> what I always liked about Wu Tang, and I think this is what most of us like about them, is that it always sounded like you know you was in a whole nother world listening to Wu Tang. Like uh-huh. you wasn't in like like you That's wasn't in like you know you wasn't in a regular realm. Like when you listen to other rappers, you, you That's that rhythm nother, production, boy. Yeah. <laughs> It had you in no, a different by, fucking by, dimension. By extension. What about Red Man? No. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> Not I, at somebody all. Somebody fucking loves Reggie Noble more than my ass. I love yeah. some Reggie Noble. Yeah, However, he's definitely in. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing conscious about Reggie Noble. Nah, I ain't nothing conscious about him. He in my top five, by the way. I love he, do the funk, though. he do the funk, though. He does. All right, what about the game? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. We had this talk off off air before we started the show, too. Yeah. He wanted them. He wanted them dudes too. I think that like he just he touched on certain subjects because it's popular at the time, but it ain't necessarily. You know, that's not his thing to be. You know, conscious. Yeah. 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 So everybody's talking about the new J album, Jay Z. <laughs> Aaron, I'll let you touch that first. Oh my goodness. Um, it's a decent album, you know. I mean, but do you think Jay is now? Can can you put Jay in? The, and and let let me also say this. Back when I was in high school, when Jay first came out in 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 Hawaii and Sophie, and he was with Jazzo, and they mm-hmm. made the the original originators, they were yeah. spitting that conscious shit. But I'm telling yeah. you, part of the issue is because Afrocentricity it was faddish at that point. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. And Jay is definitely one of those people to go with was popular at the time. So. Yep. And what's more popular at the time than being woke? Uh huh. Well, it's it's actually swung back now because I think because shit has gotten so bad out there in those streets mm-hmm. that they're like, oh shit, you know, Kendrick and Cole are here. Let's all right. Let's all. And be I think woke. that's another that's another thing about this album. I feel like you know, like Jay playing it safe again. He piggybacking off for of the fact that you know uh, Kendrick and um, J Cole made it. You know, cool to do that type of thing. Well, and t- as an extension of what you just said, said Aaron, there's no way Jay can be a mumble rapper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, it's it, just yeah. not anything he's going to do. Like, right. Jay is never going to do that. So, the direction to go in other than that, that you can pop off of, is being. <laughs> yeah, true. You know, like, mm-hmm. that's the new stick. And, and we're not we're not Jay Decepticons on this show. <laughs> I am. Well, I am. well two, well, two <laughs> out of three, two out of three of us are not Jay Decepticons. But Jay, so that but, I mean, hater, so. but but in the defense though, Jay has had conscious moments, just like you know those other people we talked about, like um, uh-huh. uh, like songs like The Evils, like The Evils is very conscious. Yeah, to me. yeah it is. And, I um, even think, I even think, like, like, and this is what I was saying to you early, Arian. What does he say on Twenty Two Tools? He tells you to build on Twenty Two Tools. Yeah, too much black and too much love equal forever. <laughs> on Twenty Two Tools, he's dropping jewels. What the fuck are they talking about? He's dropping jewels now. He's dropping yeah, right, jewels right. on Twenty Two Tools. Yeah, it's just it's the it's that uh it's Come the shock on, factor man. like. Everybody, Stop. everybody, you know, everybody all numb from the mumble thing. So, you know, Jay sound refreshing in comparison. That's all. Whatever. I feel like, um, big boy. Boy, stop. <laughs> it's still a good album, though. It's a good album. 
No, I mean, I say at the folks that talk about Jay dropping jewels. Now, did y'all this is the fucking reasonable doubt? Yeah. Like, or or, or, any, or anything now. after that. Come on, man. I, I don't get it. Yeah, I think Jay has, he has moments. He has moments when he he, he kind of shines through, but he's, he's not a conscious MC. Like, he's no, I think he's always actually envied Nas that, that Nas can do that so effortlessly. Because Nas is like, right. he doesn't even try. Right. Another thing that, is, another that is an interesting argument. Do you think do you think he would be a conscious rapper if he knew he could? Who Jay? Yeah. No. <laughs> that's not his thing. If it ain't about that bread, Jay ain't gonna do it. That's the that's the problem I had when he bring out albums too. Like it's always this. It's always this, he's selling you his brand first before anything. Of course, right? That's why he partner up with phone companies and whatnot. But we don't have to deal with that. See, and this is why people like people piss me off because they sit there and they be like, "Well, how y'all put all these other people um, before Jay?" Because other people that we listen to don't put their brand first. Like when Nas come out, yeah. when, when Nas came out with uh, Streets Disciple, like his fans knew about that. Like it wasn't like broadcasted in a way where it's like, "Well, you gonna have to jump through hoops just to get to it." Nas yeah. is culture first, always. He's always culture first. Yeah. I mean, so I'll, I'll, I'll I think it's a mark. You know what, Aunt? I point to, and I was gonna say, like everything you say about Jay all the time, even any question you ask about Jay is always answered for you. The way you always bring up how he answered it, he already yeah. told you. He's already told you who he is. <laughs> like, like I ain't rap like common sense. He already knows what the fuck he's doing. He knows common is conscious. And that was that was always my right. argument. That was always my argument for why I couldn't support it. Right. Cause he told you I'm about this bread. Fuck that shit. That ain't yeah. gonna give me no money in my pocket. Yeah, but- Jay's whole nar- Jay's whole narrative, like from what I can tell in his whole career, is that if you put anything before that money, you stupid. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Question. Okay, so so Ice Cube is conscious. What about NWA after Ice Cube left? Mm. Mm. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard I heard I heard niggas for life. <laughs> we all heard niggas for life. Yeah. Yeah. Like they went, everything. They went straight off the deep end. They went straight off the everything. All that conscious shit left. That, that's why I say Ice Cube was because as soon as he left, the politics left with him. So that means yeah. that he was the one that was political. Yes. Yeah. Dre started smoking weed and sex. <laughs> right. I don't smoke weed or sex. Cause brain damage on the mic can't man don't manage. <laughs> I was like that. Like the, the first thing I thought when the chronic came out, and I was like sitting there saying the album cover like do we all just forget do we all just forget that break damage on the mic don't manage what like what what happened <laughs> I ain't, I ain't, it's just for me to grow up to like the, the chronic I ain't like it as a kid what yeah I know I know what wow yeah okay here's a here's a hard one here's a hard one Aaron this is for me and Aaron because I don't, well Aunt likes him but not as much as me and Aaron do the DLC oh yeah yeah um I don't know see <laughs> my problem with that is that I also heard Helter Skelter <laughs> well I'm saying that that's, but he was in a different place on Helter Skelter what about the what about just the first album before he got all bitter and, yeah, and I mean Aggie? if we go on, if we go on, if we go on Jeff off um uh, uh, no one can do it better. Yeah, definitely. Like, it was like it was it was conscious, more so like as far as the music. Like he wasn't really talking a lot about um, a, like you know, uh, building community and all that kind of stuff. But you can you can hear like you know he was gonna take it to the next level. He, I, I, and I, I'm not saying he is Rakim. No one think I'm saying D.O.C. is Rakim. 
Although I believe DOC is one of the most underrated MCs of all time, he was a fucking lyrical beast. Mm-hmm. You know what? It's funny. It's his funny you should say that. Like it's funny. It's funny you should bring Rakim name up because I was thinking that back when I was listening to that joint, and I was like, "Yo, if if that car accident had happened, maybe he might have been the West Coast Rakim." He he fucking was though. I was thinking that. I was thinking that back when I was listening to it back in the day. And some folks think that oh, that's blasphemous. It's, it's fucking not blasphemous. Ask an old head, and nobody blaspheming in here. Like Ooh. if. <laughs> DOC. <laughs> no, somebody right now is gonna be like, douche. like somebody who's younger who doesn't understand what happened back in the day uh-huh. and doesn't even know who DOC is. The DOC is he's in the broad sense of consciousness, like Aaron is saying. He's not like acutely political or like acutely you know, quote unquote conscious why I'm telling you to build in a community. He is he's mind expanding. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's elevating the cult he elevated the culture. He uses big A words, as they say. <laughs> yeah, I was I was thinking yeah, I was thinking that it, it's it's crazy you said that because I was definitely thinking that and it was one of those things where it's like I don't want to say that out loud because I know people going to be on my top <laughs> they, they <laughs> but, um, will <laughs> but you know what but, um, yeah, if I was they are on your that. top Aaron they just it's just because then you understand how limited their their hip hop um knowledge is because anybody who's a, a real head and, and and actually, like it's probably like like you know more of an old head. He's just like you and has done their fucking research and knows knows the shit out of this culture. Understands that the DOC a mind expanding type of MC. He he didn't just want to get on the mic and just you know I don't want to talk about cars and shit. There are no songs on Noah can do it better about my car, my chain, my money. Not a damn right. one. Right, true. Ever. He doesn't, he, he curses twice on the whole album. Like, I've never heard him yeah. like how Rakim is the same mm-hmm. way. Rakim yeah. does yeah. not swear because they have a vocabulary. They don't need <laughs> to swear every other word. That makes them yeah. that much more dope. Yeah, because they... The um the um DOC talked about how he read Malcolm X, I think once before, and when Malcolm was in jail, he read the dictionary from cover to cover. Mm-hmm. Cause he ain't had shit else to do. He, I mean, you fucking in jail. And DOC was like, I'm doing the same fucking thing. The DOC has read the dictionary from cover to cover. Ain't nothing wrong with it. He's fucking intelligent, and he 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 has a a, a command of the language, and so he, he's much more lyrical, and he's mind expanding, yeah. which is still conscious. Right. Yeah, it's it's always it's always um dope to me like how uh, people like him and Rakim can do that too, like where they don't really cuss, but <clears throat> it was like it's funny because like. You don't really notice it either. Like when I was um, you don't. When I yeah, like when I when I really like realized that um they don't do that. It was like it was weird because I'm like hmm, I never even thought about it before, but they don't. It's like <laughs> well, Smith doesn't. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah, god. It was, like a, it was like it was like matter matter of fact like. <laughs> Did we just interject Will Smith into a conversation <laughs> about conscious rap? About the, the <laughs> and Rock Hill in particular. <laughs> yeah. See, but that's what I'm talking about. Like with Will Smith, with Will Smith, <laughs> with Will Smith Why or the Fresh Prince or whatever. Stop saying Will Smith in this conversation. <laughs> and only I mean, does shit like this. And yeah. but just as, as, as an example, bars. though. Just as an example, though, like you with him, yeah. like you know, you expecting, like you expect him, you expecting him not to cuss, and it's like, all right, this that, you know, corny, I don't cuss type I get shit. What you're same saying. thing with, same thing with kid and play, but with them, like when you hear Rakim, like yep. you sitting there, somebody like somebody could just like tell you like, 
even if you wasn't paying attention, like, well, it's dope how Rakim don't cuss, and then you sitting there like, hmm, damn, he don't, do he? Like, you know, it's just like, <laughs> I never Aaron, thought about it, for, but he don't. Aaron, thank you for bringing that back to a, a, a <laughs> an actual sense-making part of the conversation instead of the <laughs> and non and like the nonsensically dropped in shit that it doesn't it's not it's not pertinent. <laughs> Will Smith got bars. Oh, uh, oh my god. Okay, you know what? We'll give Will Smith and his bars a whole different show. <laughs> this is not this show right here. But no, no, I get what you're saying. Like it's like 100 percent true because. Some people, you just, you don't expect them to use foul language, but it's because of the nature of the kind of MC that they are. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't expect Heavy D to get on the mic, or you didn't expect Heavy D to get on the mic and be like, motherfuck, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, Heavy yeah. D would never do that. Yeah, he but just Heavy D little likes little to little have stuff. fun. Right, he likes that. <laughs> 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 are you, wait a minute, are you saying that bump diddly diddly D was him at, um, avoid cursing? Yeah. Net, yeah, oh. net, 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 <laughs> they got a, he got a song, don't they got a, he got a song with Tribe called Don't Curse? He has a song called Don't Curse, don't curse yeah. But he had a bunch of MCs on there that was sometimes known for saying curse words, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Like, like, well, and here's the thing. Back in the day, a lot of East Coast rappers didn't curse. That shit became a thing when gangster rap came through. So when West Coast came through, that's what people did on the West Coast was curse profusely. Yeah. Or like the ghetto boy. The ghetto boy is cursed without pause. But yeah. I mean go back and, and play a lot of the old school um golden era artists in New York. They didn't curse. Not like that. I, I always admired that. They didn't swear a lot. No, they didn't. Now now the folks that swear, like, speaking of DOC, you play his whole album, and there are like, there's one curse word on Let Me an Ear, and he says, Let Me an F an Ear yeah. on that song, and then no curse words. Then you get to the last al- um, song on the album, Grand Finale, and he has the rest of his NWA label mates on, and his, you know, because they were his road dogs, and, and they going hard. Here, uh, they just cuss, 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 cuss. <laughs> Nothing but curse words, and then the only curse word that that Trey Curry utters is once. He cursed once on Grand Finale. Once. Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? Well, what did he say? <laughs> it wasn't even a hard curse word, if I can remember. I think it was like damn or shit or something. I don't think he said the, the F word. He wasn't even F bomb, so I don't believe. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think damn counts anymore, does it? Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> it did. It did. Shit and damn counted then. Yeah. yeah. Sure it did. I mean, I mean, you couldn't yeah. say shit, shit, shit all over a record without getting, you know, Tipper Gore's um, parental guidance sticker. <laughs> Just slapped on everything. No. I mean, rightfully so. <laughs> so I mean, that's that's um that's deep. I did. I think that um I think I think consciousness should make a comeback. It was ass. I'm glad that two of our most largest invisible MCs that are at the top tier are considered quote unquote conscious. Yeah. I think that's saying okay. something. Ass was the word DOC used. Oh, there you go. See, uh, and ass is not even a curse word now. Yeah. <laughs> it was in the Bible. Get the pass. Yeah, he said, I'm going to send your ass right to the temple of doom. 
Yeah, you say ass now and nothing happens. It's like, oh, ass. Oh, okay, what is that? Does that even get edited on the edited versions anymore? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> like, I mean, dome and sloppy top don't even get edited. No. <laughs> Floppy top. <laughs> <laughs> yep. People use that on record. They say stuff like floppy top and you know, like dome brain. Yeah, they it don't. Gets worse. It, it gets worse. No, nah, I'm saying yeah, I'm saying like floppy top. I don't think I ever heard it in the record, but I don't listen to the other shit though. So I don't know. They say things that are akin to that, and they like that's how they slide it through. You know. Well, like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna take her to school, massage her brain, like stuff like that. that that's how they get through. Mm, without, yeah. you know. All right, that's first period, people. So, um, who's out to lunch today, Aunt? Your favorite, your favorite personality right now. Yeah, your boy Vince Staples. Round of applause. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, my my beef with him is different than your beef with him. Apparently, it is. Yeah, I was talking. He got this one strictly off the the culture comments he made on um the Joe Button podcast, and Joe kind of gets part parts of this too. Because he had the perfect opportunity to check him and explain what people mean by the culture. And he didn't. He was too busy. Yeah, things. that whole thing pissed me off, too, when I seen that interview. I'm just saying, yeah. this is why this is why it annoys me that they got Joe on Everyday Struggle, like, talking to these dudes. Mm-hmm. But that's part of their, their gimmick, though. What? Yeah. They got Joe on one extreme, academics on the other. That is part of their gimmick, 100%. Yeah. I mean, we have a similar thing happening on this show, but we just, we don't, we, we're not extreme like that, though. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not extreme. No, is it, no, I mean, I mean, like, I'm the old head, you guys are the, you know, the younger, you know, generation, like, brought together on one show. Oh, yeah, but without the extremes. Without the extremes, and without the, without, um, Nadeska trying to moderate shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, That's what I mean when I said we don't have that. that fucking disgusting look on her face like <sighs> this shit again. That's no. what I mean when look. I say we don't have an adult. We, there's no moderator. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't. I think we all adult on this show. I don't think that we need the adult like they need it. Yeah. Because we all adult. Yeah. On our show, you know, it's true. Not necessary to do that. It's but back to Vince Staples. Where where did it come from? <laughs> where did it come from? Chase back, chase back. Yeah, like where people like yeah, like people? where where does like what's like what's his thing? Like I don't know his story at all. Vince, well, I showed y'all the article. Vince's father was a gangbanger too. I think he was a crip, just like Vince, just like Vince. Um, is or was yeah. I don't hey, well, know. I mean, I mean, you become one? I just, knew that part about him. It's just that, like, I don't know, like, you know, like, what's his like music background? Like, you know, artists artists usually got like a music background. Like, they started like they didn't just get here from nowhere. Like, they started out with you know. Local. And doesn't that and doesn't that scare you a little bit more? <laughs> so he Vince Staples frightens me. If if we stick to this argument, Vince Staples made some very disparaging statements about being labeled a conscious rapper, period. Mm. Like he thinks like that, you know, that calling shit conscious. He's like, oh, he's like, what does that mean? Does that mean everybody else is unconscious? Fuck that shit. Yes, you fucking idiot. It does mean that. It means everybody <laughs> else is walking around fucking branded. Yes. There are the a bunch talking. of unconscious people. A bunch of them. And he just disregarded it. The fast talking pimp that he is. Look. Well. And he, <laughs> he makes too many, like, too many, he makes too many comments about 
he'll make all these comments about art. And then he'll undermine those those comments with the next fucking dumb thing that comes out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. Like, that, why that. are you talking about art? Art is a conscious, quote unquote, conscious level of topic. That's what makes him dangerous. Yeah. Culture, that is the fact that I believe untrained. he's a serial killer. Yeah. The untrained listener, he, he makes sense. Look, I'm not saying I think that Vince Staples is a serial killer. I'm saying. Vince Staples says what serial killers say. Yeah, he definitely had the potential. And he's definitely more than likely killed some people because he's made some statements. Mm -hmm. In an article, I think it was a complex article. Was it a complex article that it it was in? Or was it a... I think it was. I think it was. It might have been complex or... It was either complex or it was that other one, like one of those other ones, like daily something, like where he he talked about um, how he joined a gang so that he could murder people, that he was bloodthirsty. Yeah, it was the um the Dude, guardian. He, yep, I was yep, I, I knew I was going to just either the guardian or or complex. Yep. Yeah. That's not normal. For somebody, even gang bangers, even gang bangers who get involved in the gang don't have enough um, sense of presence to say something like that. Yeah, true. I don't think I ever heard like people like Nipsey Hussle or uh, Schoolboy Q mm-hmm. say something like that. No. Do you think that? You think that's him playing a character, or that's like legit him? I always wonder that, but at the same time, how, how, um, how even more clever and really, really sort of, um, uh, very, very like sort of, um, calculating would it be for him to hide in plain sight? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The whole the whole thought is just crazy. <laughs> no, it's just great to say that. That sounds like it take a yeah. lot of energy. Um, what the fuck else does he have to do? He's twenty two, twenty three. He's got tons of energy. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if he eats vegetables and drinks water. <laughs> <laughs> Leave camp alone. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised by that. You got the cool point. It's oh, wait man. a minute. That's a good question. Like before we went to Vince Staples, is is Chance is rapper conscious? What Chance the rapper? Is Chance the rapper a rapper? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I that's what you want to call it. I honestly haven't. I don't know. Yeah, that's still that's still that debatable call. to me. I know. I know. Like you, we don't like. You know, dug up some data and stuff that prove otherwise, but it's still debatable to me. I mean, he's definitely, I feel like he's a conscious person. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in. Tune in, ladies and gentlemen, for the rappers that sing, singers that rap, (laughs) (laughs) sing a songy rapper show later to come. But back to Vince. Well, let's not even go there. Back to Vince. (laughs) Um, Vince is. Well, I don't understand if you're anti. He talks about being anti culture and anti, like anti consciousness or whatever. Right. What what song? Like I played both his both his albums the first album all i can think is that they think it's political like circa ice cube or like yeah, or like scarface yeah. i don't even get where where they would get conscious association with ben staples except for the fact that he used to be gangbanger and he kind of like maybe he like is trying to steer you away from gangbanging well, see, you gotta remember, we in a point now where like you got a lot of these, a lot of these dudes, like I don't even want to call them rappers, that's like, mm-hmm. you know, just turning up to the beat. They not rapping anyway. So when you got somebody like right. Vince, 
where you know it's like oh i can actually hear what he's saying you know what i'm saying and mm-hmm. you know he mm-hmm. might he might be saying something that's like kind of cohesive it's like all right well that's conscious right there <laughs> what because not fucking turn up music yeah like that's that's where we at right now is that the all the oh, yeah no. like that's I feel like that's what is that's what's going on. I think our definition of being mind expansive is about as broad, you know, like you can't go broader than that. I don't think you can just keep going out wide. Right. And just call everything fucking conscious. Yeah. That's what I'm saying though. Like we in a time now where everything is so messed up where the simplest thing can have you sitting there like, oh man, he talking some deep stuff. Like I was um yeah, looking yeah. on my timeline and people sharing a bunch of uh prodigy videos because he passed away or whatever. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm like, you know, a lot of this like I listen to Mob Deep, so I'm like, a lot of this stuff isn't even like you know <laughs> what people are trying. Yeah, people trying to make it out to be like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. man. You know, it was just so epic. You know, it was so deep. Like, no, nah, it's not that deep. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was dope. <laughs> but, like, a lot of the mob deep shit isn't as profound as people try to make it out to be. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, at the same time what people like Vince Staples, like, saying something, like, trying to steer you away from gang culture, even though he mm-hmm. might be pandering, I don't know if I can be mad at that. We know. Somebody, somebody might take it to heart. And someone may also take his other stupid sentiments to heart as well. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. Very slippery. And it and it may include a chokehold and a chainsaw. <laughs> That's my only issue. Like seriously, like I don't want, you know, years later or even, you know, like months later that you know, we find out that he was, you know, killing strippers. While he was touring or something. <laughs> Again, oh I'm not saying that Vince Staples is a serial killer. I'm saying Vince Staples says things that serial killers say. <laughs> and when you look at him, he has the thousand yard stare. Okay? Just, he's dead behind the eyes. That's all I'm saying. But, all right, I already know your beef with him. Like, I want to know Anthony's beef with him, though. Like, what's, what's your issue with the bull? But what I said was like is that the main thing was his comments on like there is no culture like he hates when people say he's for the culture or whatever. I feel like saying stuff like that, being on a platform that you're on, and being the fact that people like you, you know, they take what you say as truth. That that's dangerous, especially when you've shown the intelligence to know better. Hmm. Yeah. And Joe Button sitting right there, co-signing, well, not even co-signing, but not speaking up, kind of irritated me, too. He did kind of co-sign, though. But he, he mentioned yeah. something about the elements, but then he, like I said before, he kind of whispered it. Like, he didn't push it. Yeah. I don't, I mean, do you think yeah. Jay Staples knows the elements think, of hip-hop? I think he read them somewhere. Yeah. I think he definitely one of those types. He's the type to like, you know, because because he seen all the heat he was catching for saying the nineties is underrated and all this stuff, like he definitely did his research on a lot of stuff and tried to pander to a certain audience now. That's what it seemed like to me anyway. Like that that, that he switched it. Cause I remember he was talking a whole lot of, you know, F the nineties stuff and it seems like he did uh-huh. switch his stance yeah. on that. Yeah, I feel like, like he when, did the research so he can. On the and show, he was talking about Prodigy dying, like, like all of a sudden, he was just always like, "Is he going all in with Prodigy right now?" Exactly, that kind of shit is kind of mm-hmm. be pissing me off with him. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, no, I want that same energy you had a month ago. Like, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, pandering with a positive message is not necessarily a bad thing. Really? I guess. Look, for better you know or for think- worse, be you, be, be 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 whoever you are. Right? Do you know what I think that is though? I think that's him, like you know, getting himself comfortable with a certain type of audience in the hip hop world, so that so that you know when he do start doing the nut shit, like he gonna have a bunch of people that we take seriously in the game co-signing for him. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like that's what that is. Yeah. 
Yeah. But that don't that don't take away from the person at home listening to his music who might have taken something positive from it. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. Um, it is. I mean, I want to think. Look, I want to think, and you know what? That's that's. It's weird for you to say that, Aaron, because not weird, but it's, it's like last week we read about Charlemagne and Charlemagne's book Black Privilege, and he was talking about how hip hop helped him, and then he talked about how hip hop hindered him. Mm, the same yeah. hip hop he listened to that was helping him also then hindered him, and like yeah, hyped him up. To it do is shit. Double edged sword. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So I'm like, can can Vince Staples help you as well as hurt you? In in the same breath, probably. Probably. So I see right here. I'm reading right now that he um he he um like a, a peripheral member of our future. I can see that. That makes that. very yeah it, it, it does make sense actually. It does, and they annoy me too. Me too, in a way. <laughs> I like our future, but it's just it's so much yeah. stuff that yeah, I don't know. know. It's so iffy, iffy. Yeah, because they one of those they one of those groups that like, and they're creative too. Like I don't take away from their creativity. Exactly. Right. They um they one of those groups that got the same stance as him. It's like, oh well, what really is the culture? Like, why we gotta define ourselves to this, that, and this? They got that same type of stance. They're because because standards. That's why. Because standards over bullshit. That's why. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we know that, but their their audience gonna feel like you know their audience gonna follow that narrative. It's like why you gotta confine yourself to this, that, and the third, like. Just do whatever you're doing, and it's gonna be what it's gonna be. No, Sanders and Whitaker. <laughs> Sanders and Whitaker. Right. <laughs> what, what kind of Whitaker? This pop has always been rebellious, though. <laughs> ghost dog, ghost dog Whitaker. Ghost dog Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's lunch, people. When we come back from lunch. We have a special guest on our show today, right, Ant? That's right. That's right. Listen to the show in the past after the bell. Oh, that is. <laughs> you might have heard me mention once or twice the group Actual Proof. On the line, we have one of the members of Young Brother Sundown. Hey, what's up, man? Yo, what's going on, bro? Thanks for coming out. Uh, I don't know what's going on. No problem. Thanks for having me. Um, hello. Hello, how are you? How you doing? It's Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 a little I'm scared because of the I heard about the the topic of the show and I don't know if I can live up to it but uh, I'll see if I can. <laughs> What's going on, man? Uh, here. <laughs> What's up? What's up? What's up? So well, we're talking a, about point too, what? Yeah. What, what? 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 Man, just said he he don't feel like he can live up to that because that was the point I was going to raise. Well, we're talking about on. Because Vince Staples and others have actually brought up um, their their um, distaste for the term conscious rapper or conscious, you know, rap music. And I want to know why the backlash, why the hatred for consciousness? Uh, I, I don't personally have a hatred for it. But at the same time, when I hear that term, I know that most people put a sense of expectation on you that it's really hard to live up to. <laughs> like, it's, it almost it almost makes it seem like you're more virtuous than other people, or, or something like that. And it's it's it, it really is a tough standard to live up to. And maybe that's his that's his aversion to it. I'm not sure. I don't really listen to Vince Staples a lot. But I have some yeah. of, of interviews floating around. Mm. He yeah, I don't, well. I don't agree with the um, fact that um, there's too many standards to live up to because I feel like if you're just doing you and you're just being who you are, like I feel like in most cases, conscious rapper, you just um, you know, you're just being a down to earth person. Like if you if you're the type of person that a regular person can relate to, I feel like that's being more conscious than anything. 
I would say you're being more realistic than conscious. I was I was recently talking to E about that because we we've had multiple discussions over the years about are we conscious? Because a lot of people put that label on us. Mm-hmm. Some of the discuss some of the discussions we have or the jokes we make. Not not saying that we're like using slurs and all this other craziness, but we say stuff that's funny to us that most people would be like, oh my God, I can't believe actual proof talks like that. Or, oh my God, I can't believe they would laugh at something like that. You know, we just, I don't know. We, we just, we have, we have the subjects that we wind up talking about in our music, but that doesn't encompass who we really are. So when somebody says, oh man, you know, you're real conscious or, or this and that, it's like, well, you don't really know me. You only know me through my music and what I choose to share. Uh, mm, yeah, true. That uh-huh. means- so, so that's why I get a little hesitant for that for that um, that term being used with us. Well, what if we told you that our definition of um, consciousness and, and conscious rap or conscious hip hop, whatever you want to like, whatever mm-hmm. term you want to use, is really just anyone who causes or provokes thoughts or deep thoughts hmm. in that case um, I don't really I don't listen to a lot of our music if I do listen to our music I listen to E's part I'm not really a fan of myself really so yeah mm-hmm. so it's, mm-hmm. it's hard for me to I don't need have to, like if you had a gun to my head and asked me to rap a verse to just throw a random song out Mm -hmm. I'm gonna struggle so I don't know if I'm inspiring thought provoking you know I I don't I don't really know I I know what I write in the moment like okay this feels good I'll I'll, I'll wrap this on this beat but after I do that Mm -hmm. I'm moving on to something else have you have you ever gotten it have you ever gotten any feedback on whether your um rhymes provoke any type of thought um, I'll have random people, random friends texting me or every now and then somebody will DM me on Twitter and say something. And I've, I've, I've had to ask my boy, uh, Shan multiple times. He'll text me a lyric and I'll be like, yo, who said that? And he'll say, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's, That's funny. Cool. Like, I, I, I just don't like, like if, if like you couldn't ask Stephen King to, yo, what's on page 47 of it? Like, right. I, yeah. that, I don't know how long ago I, I moved on to something else and that's kind of how I look at it I don't I know this is terrible and KRS one said you should memorize all your rhymes but I don't like I write and then I move on to something else so when you go to and, perform how do you remember when you to go to perform oh man days of performances <laughs> me and E are constantly like yo how's my first start and I'll wow. I'll start rapping it and I've been there I'll look at him I look at him like, yo, give me a keyword here. I need to like, give me that fill in word. And by showtime, I memorized it. And we've been doing it so long now that there are certain songs that we perform over and over that. Okay. I remember that. It one. just comes back but, to you like that. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. but if we were to don't always come right back. <laughs> or, or <laughs> if it doesn't come back, we'll have to listen to the song a couple of times. Yeah. But E, he can memorize something as soon as he writes it. Uh, yesterday we were on the phone and he rapped a verse from like nine years ago like he just wrote it wow and I don't know how he it, I guess he writes to a beat so he writes a couple bars says it over and over in his head and then comes up with the next ones and then before you know it he's done with his verse I just write and there's plenty of times I'll go in the booth and be like yo that's over 16 or that's not quite a quite a 16 and I'll have to like finish it because uh-huh. in my head okay it's like okay I'm done right now I'm ready and if it's too much I'll cut it back if it's not enough like okay let me go finish it so that's how our processes are different and that's how he memorizes but I can't write like that yeah so would you say just you know along the lines of the of the, of the, um, the conscious MC thing would you say that maybe you think that that partially a lot of people think that that term is limiting because there have been ones that you wouldn't think 
would have a problem with being called conscious, like, say, to live, um, quality. And people mm-hmm. who like, you know, like to live in that area, in that realm, because it's, you know, it's obvious that that's what they do. Like, you know, like right. they live there. They they don't they don't come outside of that wheelhouse a lot. It, it's just it's almost they, undeniable. Exactly. Um, do you think maybe in the, like even Kendrick? Because Kendrick doesn't. I've read articles where he said he didn't, you know, want to be labeled, but that's his wheelhouse. He's there. Mm-hmm. With, like without a doubt, without having to do anything, it's it's, it's it's how he breathes and moves. Do you do you think that maybe they just find it a artistically limiting, and b maybe they they feel like being thrown into that area is going to cut into their record sales because the thing that's being pushed in the predominant mainstream arena is not what's conscious. So if you label it conscious, like that's automatically you're just going to start chopping down what I can do and how much I can make and what kind of moves I can make. Um, I would say, like, if you label something conscious, there's a lot of people that will just immediately be hands off. Like, I don't want to hear that conscious shit, you know? Um, and, and for, I guess it could be artistically limiting because let's say one of them wants to do a song with Gucci. Some people, but, oh my God, you're a conscious rapper. You can't rap with Gucci. Like, why would you do something like that? Just because, you know, me and him bumped into each other. It's like, yo, I appreciate your work. You trying to, you trying to do something? Uh, yeah, why not? Like, I, I would have no problem. Now, I'm not going to get on a song and talk about sipping lean or anything. I've never done that. Right. Yeah. But if, I think you know, it's, sorry, sorry, go ahead. I, I think it's levels to it, though. Like, for example, like, I don't. Like, I wouldn't expect anybody like Immortal Technique to do a rhyme with Gucci. Right. But right. if it was somebody if it was somebody like Kendrick, like, I don't mind hearing Kendrick on uh, the ASAP Rocky song, you know, the genre where he like, um, the bad bitches one. Like, I don't, I don't mind yeah. hearing him on there. So I don't but, think it's always some, limiting. It just depends on what type of artist you are. I think it depends on the type of fans you have. Like, will they be willing to take that ride with you? Because... Mm-hmm. A lot of Kendrick fans might have been like, oh my god, he's on a song with ASAP Rocky. Ugh. And the name of the song is Fucking Problem. And Drake's on right. it. Nope, I'm done. <laughs> right. You know, as opposed to, let me just see what Kendrick can bring to the song. And I, I, think, I think that's. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think you're, you're right, but I think. I think Kendrick had to establish himself to get to that point. I don't think you could start out that way. Yeah, but I, I'll give you that. Um, it's one of the things that I've, I can't remember where I read it or heard it, but somebody told me rap fans are so fickle. They are. And, and yeah. if you don't give them what they expect of you, like, that could be the end of your career. Uh, E&I had to step away to handle, like, life situations. Mm-hmm. And we haven't put out anything since 2012. We've probably wow. lost a, a majority of our fans. Oh no! And and I'm I'm just I'm just being realistic with myself. Like you know, they just haven't heard of us. And there's been, I mean, you turn around every week. There's five new artists putting out projects, just constantly. People flooding Twitter and SoundCloud and Tumblr and whatever with music. So it's easy to forget about somebody. I mean, and, right now it's it's just quantity over quality. Though I'm sure. That your quality will shine through, though. I, I, I'm, I believe we're much better rappers than we were when we stepped away. Um, we've been working on new music for about a year and a half now. Plus, in the time that, like, after we released our last album, we, we've been recording, I would say, somewhat consistently since then, but nobody's heard anything. So, in that time, people might just, ah, I'm good where I left off with them. Because there's been artists that I listen to where after a certain point, it's like, eh, I kind of tuned them out after this point. And I get it. If, if we missed our window, we missed our window. But, like, that, I don't know. That's just a risk you run. And as a conscious artist, you, you already don't have a, or if you're labeled conscious, you already don't have, like, that mainstream 
wave like you were talking about, you know? Right. So there's so even less of a push. Our two you. top tier, our, like, our two top tier MCs right now are, that's where they live. Like, they're quote unquote conscious at this point. And the two are Kendrick and. J. Cole? J. Cole, okay. So you'll, you'll rate those two. Okay. Well, it took a long time for both of them to get there. Yeah. And both of them have cosigns that you wouldn't really consider conscious. Like True. Kendrick yeah. had to get almost all of the West Coast to come to one of his shows before he was mm-hmm. before he was deemed like, okay, now mm-hmm. he's the one. That show where Game, Snoop, Dre, MC, mm-hmm. like everybody from the West showed up. And, you know, he cried yeah. on stage because it was like, yo, now you're the one. Cole had to Cole's been signing Jay Z basically since he got popular and mm-hmm. he's just now entering that part that that phase where everybody's like, All right, Cole made it, you know? Before yeah. people were like, Yo, Jay your man won't even jump on your songs or like when he dig it on the album it's not even a single cut. Like, you know, it's just yeah. always something. But he yeah. even, took him this even long still to get though, there. like just even a little still. conscious Conscious is a hard thing to it's hard thing to take for like mainstream like they don't really they don't really get into yeah. that like you know like um Kendrick, I think Kendrick and J Cole is more of an easier pill to swallow than a lot of the people that we would um put in that category. Yeah, and, and one of the, one of the knocks on J Cole that I hear all the time is oh my god he's so sleepy. Yep. He's boring. Oh my god, I'll, I'll put <laughs> yeah I'll put this on if I'm ready to go to go to take a nap. Boring. Like, like you're just totally ignoring the skill level and yeah. the, the passion that he puts into it. it. Just so that's why as soon as you start labeling something conscious, you can just see people's like, mm, nah, I'm not really trying to listen to that. Well, and just I think so that's you what know, a lot of artists get scared of. Yeah, I, and and well, and I know you guys are young. I'm the I'm the old head on the show, so it wasn't always like that. It used to be the opposite, actually. You know, yeah, and, like, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. And I was just going to say, like, you know, like we've we've watched, you know, all of us have watched our share of Vlad. You know, like we hate Vlad, but Vlad has his people <laughs> on that we like, you know, and like especially the old heads that come on. And like almost every old head that we love, like G-Rap, has, you know, they've, they've talked about how it used to be dope. To be like it it used to be dope to be lyrical. It used to be very, very dope to be intelligent and to display that on the mic to other people, like J. Cole. Like it used to be very, very that was upper echelon. If you upper echelon and you did those things, that put you in a in a category in the stratosphere that other people couldn't touch you in. Yeah. That's 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 fifth that's fifth element. Yes. The knowledge component of the culture. Yeah. And that was um, that was very important. But now now that part is very important to me. Especially lately because I'm starting to get more comfortable with rapping. Like I didn't I probably didn't get comfortable with rapping until we did our third project. And a lot of what you hear on our album was recorded way before our third project was finished. So now that I can like figure out what I want to say and how I want to say it, I still put time into like, nah, don't use that word. Too many people use that word. Or don't yeah. say yeah. don't don't say like because so many rappers use similes for everything. In yeah. my mind, like that's that's already been done. So do something else. Mm-hmm. So that to me is more important than being labeled quote unquote conscious like i want to be known as a good mc and i also want to be known for saying things that other people don't say whether that's using a different vocabulary or using a different style or like not having to rhyme every bar with the one that came before it you know so yeah. I, th- that, I think that happened that's I think more that, important i think that happened with a lot of artists though like um uh Sometimes you just get wrapped up into that category, you know, without even trying to, you know, because you, yeah. you know, because you're working so hard on the delivery and the way you saying things, and maybe you just happen to be a person that's concerned about certain things in the community or concerned about, you know, uh, what's going on in everyday life, you know, and that I think a lot of times it just, 
uh, you know, a snowball effect and turns into that. I, I was yeah, gonna ask like, if you think if you think that attention to detail in itself almost qualifies you to be a conscious rapper. And and I was gonna say that because exactly what you just said is what we said about Rockham and the DOC. Like that makes you um contemplative. You will now be pushing thought. You'll be pushing you'll be elevating up to a higher plane, which is to me all it means to be conscious. It's not about a silly like y'all know my going give money to your community like it's not about that <laughs> right <sure>. right <laughs> um i would i could kind of see that um because i do put a conscious effort into trying to be better as opposed to just saying anything but at the same time like i realize how hard it is to write a hit i could n- yeah. i don't think i could write um let me think of a, a hit song that, like Lemonade by Gucci. I don't really listen to the radio a lot, but I remember that song was big for a while, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, no matter how much conscious thought I put into it, like, yo, I've got to write a hit that's going to bang in the clubs. I don't think I could write that. And even if I could write it, I still can't perform it the way he can. So maybe there's a level of consciousness to that as well. I don't that know I about can't that. tap into. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, like, I... I'm a writer also, like, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a poet. I left my MC days, like, a zillion years ago, like, eighth grade, something like that. A zillion <laughs> years ago. After I, after I, 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 I was, like, rhyming over um, beats that my boy made. And, um, you were and, the young and I, Well, this was back in the day. You know, this is when James was making, first making beats, and I rapped over a beat, and then I, I stopped rapping because I heard some poetry, and I was like, oh, wow, poetry. He was like, what? And I was like, I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't, I don't, I don't want to spit anymore. He was like, f you. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Um, I will write, you know, things to. I find myself hearing something like, like today, I was on the street with my friends. I was on the low end. So I'm, I, I, um, I stay in Chicago, and Amigos was playing. Somebody drove by playing Amigos, and we all just bust out. I don't even like Migo. And we all just was like, you know, raindrop, drop top. Like it's... That's, I, I'm, I'm I can write that, that, that in my sleep. I can write that in my sleep. But, okay, so you could write that in your sleep. I could. And maybe I could too, but I didn't. And and I have to I have to give that up to, to them. And it's uh, specifically, I think... I'm I'm pretty new to the Migos, but I think that's Offset. Yeah, it is Offset. It's um, Offset. I have to give it up to him because that is catchy as shit. I, like when I hear <laughs> stuff like that, I'm like, damn, how did he how did he do that? Because of course you could be walking down the street or talking to a child or whatever and rap a rhyme, raindrop and drop top. But the cadence he set it in, the the like that's the start of his verse. That shit just grabs you, and I think there's something to that. And there's a level of consciousness that it takes to be a good songwriter. And whether or not you're saying some super deep shit, or if you're saying some catchy shit, like a lot of people jump on Drake. Ah, Drake's not nice. To me, Drake's nice as shit. Like, and writing controversies aside, his whole career, he's been able to say something that is instantly quotable as soon as you hear it. Like, damn, that works. And, and you just can't shake it. I can't do I that. It, so when I yeah, I definitely think it's that. Like I hear what you're saying, but I think that I just think it's been done a whole lot more complicated and a whole lot better, but still catchy. So you know, um, but but I do hear where you're coming from. I just I just this time yeah, change. I don't standards I are low. I don't, I don't, yeah, standards I don't know. Are low. I don't yeah, I don't, I don't really see it. Like it's like for example, like the uh. The Jay Z line that everybody keeps throwing around, where it's like, uh, you put the money to your ear. We we don't call that money over here. Yeah. And it's like, it's not it's not really catchy, but people are making it something that is catchy. Well, I liked it because I related to it because I had the same thought. Once, like I used to hate playing <laughs> that. Yeah, that's but see, I think I think that's what I think that's what he was doing too. He was playing on the fact that like. To me, it seemed like Jay was on social media and looking at the stuff that people had gripes with and was like, I'm going to touch on this, that, and the third. Like, it was like one of those things. And um, 
it was, it just happened to be one of those things that a lot of people get tired of seeing or get tired of hearing. And because he said something about it, it was like, oh man, yeah, you know, like he's one of those people. You well, are, you know what? Uh, That's funny that you say that too, Aaron. Is that is that is it catchy or is it people? Because like you also um, same that interview when um, when. Um, G Rap was talking about people basically being entertained to the level of their own intellect. Oh. Is it is it catchy or is this as low as like is this as high as you can go? So to you, it's just it's catchy because that as far as you go, that's where you stop. Right. Yeah. True. Because I'm not, I'm not that entertained by it. Like, yeah. even though I hear it and I can spit it, I don't, I don't, I'm not about to start jumping around and dancing to it. Now, some of it is very, like, I'm not gonna lie. There are guilty pleasure songs out there that I just, when I hear a birthday song come on, I'm going to just start <laughs> acting like a dumbass. <laughs> There's guilty yeah. pleasure artists too. Shout out to Rick there Cafe. are like, like Trick Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> no. I think I think if you like if you if you're a person that like listen to older music, like you can definitely tell the difference between like what's catchy and profound compared to what's catchy and just like not you know it's not high level at all. But because I'm afraid listen, it might be that that's yeah. where you stop. That that's where your oh, elevator right, keeps because, going. At. Because if you listen to catchy. like if you listen. To, if you listen to like older like uh, Motown music and stuff like that, like those songwriters, they made catchy hits, they but did. it wasn't it wasn't low vibrating as Miss Miss Mitch no. would say. Like, you know, it wasn't you know to the point where it was like anybody can do that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, definitely. I, well, I, I, I do th- feel like that. That that's that's definitely true. That there were times that when things were very very catchy, and they were very very you know like more poppy. But you did not feel as though you could have done it at all. Right, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. I think our guest has something to say. <laughs> no, no, I, I just I, I think about this a lot because we've we've always talked about since we signed signed to Jamla, we're not the the part about making the music is easy. Mm. Like somebody will make a beat somebody will rap to it the hard part is the business of selling music Mm. and some of these artists that you hear doing things that you don't think are profound maybe they understand like i'm trying i I would love to go deeper but nobody wants to hear that from me right so do i do i want to be able to say that i'm a rapper right i don't have another i don't have another job this is how I pay my bills, you know, or I just want to be famous or whatever. Well, I know mm-hmm. the way to do it is to say certain things and be on certain songs. Hey, I get yeah. it. Man. You, you want to go out and, and make a bad and bougie? By all means, please do it. Because I'd rather you have, be doing that and getting legal money than, you know, doing an alternative thing that could land you in jail or dead you know or or harming your community or whatever so i i get i get that it might not sound profound but on the other side i also understand like that desire to like i've i've fought for this my whole life i've been rapping since i was 12 or whatever somebody's story might be and right. if this is how i gotta get on then this is how i'm gonna get on yeah, I think that that's definitely. I mean, that makes me sad. Um, but we we definitely not, not to you know undermine, but we call that pandering on this show because that's pretty much what mm-hmm. it is. But yeah. and 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 because we have a respect, a very high respect for art, we believe that art imitates life, imitates art, imitates life. So we believe that putting out art can be a detriment to your community. It's just a slow burn. It's not it's gonna kill you right now. It's like it's like it's like eating yourself to death. It takes longer, but you, but you still get there. Well, that so, was always that was always my gripe with Jay Z. He did exactly that. You know, he did, I can't sell getting all deep, so I'm gonna dumb it down a little bit. 
Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, well, speaking of Jay Z, at the beginning of the Fade to Black movie, um, I think I can't remember who it was, but a young I don't know who the rapper is, but he was basically saying. I say these things because this is what people want to hear. And Jay said, see, you got rappers scared to be themselves, talking to the general public. Mm. People, um, um, a lot of people don't want to hear it. And it's, maybe it's not necessarily that they can't, their level of intelligence or consciousness can't go that far, but when they listen to music, like, hey, that's my escape. Yeah. I'm not, and I've, I've talked to plenty of people. Like, I don't even really listen to song lyrics. And me, doing what I do, it's like, what? You don't listen to lyrics? How can you not? <laughs> right, yeah. but there's a lot of people that they just, all I want to hear is somebody flowing well on this beat in a beat that's catchy. That's literally the end of it for them. And yeah. some of these people that I ask are extremely intelligent, but they just don't care. And, but I- you know, you... Go ahead. Sorry. Hello? It, it's, it's just tough. It's tough to hear that, but at the same time, I get it. Yeah. Um, I feel like um, what I've noticed is that um, the more, the more, I mean, I guess if we want to call it conscious side of rap or, you know, the more um, thought-provoking side of rap, it seems like it got, it has more of a quiet audience. Like, you don't really... You know, like, these people not really in the forefront, but, like, you know, and, and what I can tell, like, Jamila, Jamila has a lot of fans, like, a lot of people, you know, um, talk about, you know, what Ninth Wonder is doing and all that type of stuff, and, you know, how dope Ad 2 and Rhapsody, and even what y'all been doing, like, people, you know, a lot of people talk about it, but, like, it's not what's being put to the forefront, you know what I'm right. saying, like, it's, it's not, um, always the most popular thing to talk about but it's you know it's definitely something that's um in the back of uh, people's heads even if even if um when you do it you don't feel that way because you don't see the same reception i i don't know i i on one hand i'll try and like yo, the people, the people still check for us. And then on the other hand, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do what I do, rap what I rap, and that'll be that, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I try not to get too caught up into the who's listening and how many people yeah. are listening, because because then I I'm think scared that's I'm probably good too. Yeah. I'm scared I'm gonna start playing that game of oh well, people aren't listening. Well, yep. this is what they want to hear, so let me right. start doing yep. that. I think that's yeah, I think- like, 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 like for our show too, because I like I don't look at our demographics. But when we do look at that, like I kind of try to stay away from it. I think it's better for you to just be whoever you are and just keep pushing and let that audience find you. Like what yeah. Aaron is talking about is like you can have a career that burns bright and burns out quickly. Like and, and that's what happens with most of these new people. Or you can eat for years off a very steady, strong fan base. And I just, I think for myself, I think it, it I think the latter is, is, is a much more appealing to me personally. It, it can be that, but also imagine being an artist on stage and all people want to hear is your old hit. And you're like, yo, I got something new coming out. Nope, we don't want to hear it. I don't yep. care shit about your growth. Yeah, yeah. Just give, yep. me, give me, give me the hit. Give me the hit. That Play happens a lot. In. I don't, yep. but I don't care I, about Third Eye Girl or any of that. Just give me the yeah. hit. <laughs> it's like that, shit. That, I put all the time in this new shit. Yeah, because like, because like D'Angelo will get on stage and want to perform, and they'll be like. Brown sugar, where's the brown sugar? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, in the, in the back of his mind, he's probably like, he's, he's like, all right, I'll give you brown sugar, but, man, I've been doing this shit for 20 years. Like, he doesn't want to perform want brown to... sugar and, and, like, how does it feel anymore? He, like, sometimes he right. gets mad. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, come on. Like, that's all you yeah. think I am? Yeah, they yeah. try to make him take his shirt off again. After all these years, he has to keep right. his shirt on now. Though he has to keep his shirt on. <laughs> he can't take his shirt. He got that, bare guts. That's, that's a different story. 
mean, we some grown, we some grown, you know, some grown mofos. Now your shirt got to stay on. But I think, I think that's that's case in point to what to what you're saying, 100. percent I don't feel like your audience always wants you to grow in a way that you want to grow. But at, yeah, at the same time like, too, I feel like I feel like the type of audience that uh, gravitate to your music or Jamila or somebody along those lines yeah. are usually the type of people that's looking for that kind of growth that appreciates that. And they might grow I with would you. Hope so. I would hope, like, what if, what, if tomorrow, what if tomorrow me and E are like, you know what, man, let's make a strip club anthem. <laughs> We're going to be rapping on it. I'm still going to be trying to do my thing, but I just want to make a song for the strippers. I'm scared people will be like, man, I don't want to hear that. Well, I go to strip clubs. How come I can't, you know, like I go to a library and we made the song Genius? No problem. But if it's I, I want to explore other parts of who I am, I might start alienating people it's like you know, I, I, I'm just trying to talk I'm just trying to show you who I am because you know what that matters I'm, gonna, I'm gonna argue that point with this okay I think it's the way you like for instance D'Angelo because we were just talking about D'Angelo I think mm-hmm. if you made a stripper anthem that was like a left <laughs> and right if you made a left and right I think you can fly under the radar with that. It's the way that you handle it, I think. You can't uh-huh. do it. Nice, nice like, girl in the ball. Yeah, I mean, you can't do it. You can't <laughs> do a juicy good example, J. Good you can't do juicy J band to make her. Like, don't, like that, no. That's going to throw you all the way out to the left. If you <laughs> do it in such a way, I think you can do it. The, the Roots recorded Tipping Point in the basement of the strip joint for that vibe. See, there you yep. go. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Mm. It's all in how you think about it, I think. Yeah, I, I just, I know that the the term conscious, the way that the the majority of people think of it is very, it's just very limiting. And for me, like, just like the way I write, I write the way I write with no beat because I don't want to be limited. Yeah. And I'll I'll take what I wrote and then okay, yeah, this will fit on this beat. And maybe I'll have to take some words out here or change the way I say a few things to fit it in there, but at least I got to be free and say what I wanted to say without worrying about what the beat was doing, you know? Mm-hmm. So Well, with, I don't know. Like whole, we always say Common definitely made um a film called Pimp. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I think right I think again I really think I think you can do what you want I think it's all in how you do what it is that you do I think and just I, I think a literally lot of that... don't vibrate lowly like you can you can make a high vibrating stripper joint I hope so <laughs> 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 but you know I, I just I'm more concerned. And another thing that comes into play is how are you presented? Like Kendrick is presented to us as this intelligent, thoughtful rapper. Kendrick right. talks about a lot of hood shit too. He does. Like what if what if they were like, eh, let's let's run with this this um, persona for you. How would people look at him then? Not sure. I think I would argue that 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 in the in the natural realm of who Kendrick is is probably just not something that he's interested in doing. Maybe, like that's maybe. just not um, like maybe. not him. Maybe. It's like I said. Yeah, though, I, I don't. It's the, it's the way he does it as an artist, though. Like Kendrick, yeah. like it's, it's some of his lines when you hear it. It's like you can tell, like he's just having fun with it, or he's being funny. Like you know, if I gotta slap a pussy ass bitch, <laughs> you know that kind of shit. Right, like, right. You know, it's like he not. A lot of times when we think about conscious rappers, they always gotta be serious. Like you know, Chuck it's D. Like, everybody's right, right, yeah, yeah. right. Everybody's not Chuck D. Right. That's you know, right. But you can. That's what I mean. Like you can still be conscious and still you know have fun with it because this is hip hop right. and it's not always about just being, you know, straight face. Very true. You know, like I mean, sometimes you gotta make mahogany, and <laughs> <laughs> you know you can't always always talk about triple safe darkness. Sometimes you gotta talk about yeah. That goes. See, know. that's back to my mount. That's back to my mount Rushmore theory. Mount Rushmore theory. 
Yeah, it's mm-hmm. the Mount Rushmore theory. Like every what, since what's the Mount every Rushmore since, theory. Well, basically the theory is that um most of the rap you hear now, like it gotta be along the lines of you know, uh, rock him, I ain't no joke, or you know, that type of thing for you to even be considered a rapper. Like, you can't rap. Like, I know people that don't even consider Ludacris and uh, Red Man rappers because, oh, the joke rappers, they don't, you know what I'm saying? But they have mm. fun with it. They still, they still don't what we consider hip hop, you know what I'm saying? But because they not, you know, chasing that lane of G Rap, Rock him, Big Daddy Kane, if they, because they not chasing that type of, uh, 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 Style of rap. Yeah, Ashton Mountain. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like uh, people people that we put on that level because uh, they not doing right. that. They not they not considered, you know, and that's mm. not fair. I don't I don't think that's fair at all. I think we should be it should be a balance. We should still be able to have Red Man, we should still be able to have Q Tip, yeah. Trap Called Quest, Spook, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, the the technical skill that if you look at the technical skill of what Ludacris does. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, Luda's rapping his ass off. Yeah, yeah he is. It might, yeah. it might be about a, a woman's ass or an alcoholic beverage or whatever. But never take that technical from him. skill. Mm-hmm. Right, but, but he, he still get busy. He does. Or, or bust the rhymes. Bust oh, the absolutely. rhymes. Bust the like, bust the rhymes. Absolutely. Is so underrated as a rapper because yeah. when you hear him, it's most of the stuff is either funny. Or it's just like, yo, this is he's he's flowing on that beat, not paying attention to what like how he's doing it and the, the syllables he's using and where he places them and how he punches the the, the rhymes yeah. perfectly, yeah. how he uses his voice as an instrument. All that gets overlooked just cause he made put put your hands on my eyes and see us, you know? Well, yeah, to interject right. what, what you're saying, he only he only gets treated like that in this generation. We considered yeah. in in our yeah. generation, we recognized his supreme lyricism, and he was in the conversation. He was considered somebody who was in the higher mm-hmm. echelon. It's just, be- yeah. As as time goes on, a lot of that gets gets lost, and the only ones that but that's that's part of the Mount Rushmore theory that Aaron's talking about. It's like like after the time goes on you have etched these five into the mountain and that's all you remember whereas from my generation standpoint we wholeheartedly remember that he was in the conversation he was always in the conversation Mm -hmm. um that's actually second period and um i'm gonna hand (laughs) the show over to you ed So this is recess, recess today. I feel it's only right that we talk about actual proof and my man Sundown's Sundown's career as a whole. Um, You might disagree with the Conscious Rapper label, but for me as a listener, you fall squarely in that category. (laughs) Uh, As long as that's a compliment, I'll take it. (laughs) It definitely is a compliment. (laughs) Recess is reserved for out there, yeah. I, I wouldn't even say that. I, I welcome criticism too. Like, I think it's crazy to listen to only good things about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Criticism True. is definitely healthy. It's definitely healthy. When is when is productive productive criticism? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, well, on this show, we 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 consider only arguments that can be backed up by statements that are somewhat factual and are logical and make sense. <laughs> okay. You can't just say so and so is fire and then walk off. Like that's that's <laughs> you require further explanation, further explanation. You can't just say it's sonically pleasing. No. It's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, that that sounds like a cop out sometimes. Mm-hmm. I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> oh right. yeah. So so tell us a little bit about how you and uh, Enigma met up with Knife Wonder? That is all attributed to Enigma. He is... He was rapping in high school a little bit. Um, I was not... I was, I was of the mindset, like, 
rappers are like superheroes. Like, man, I can't do that. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. I went off to college. He went off to the military. Uh, he, uh, he was still rapping a little bit when he was in the military. He got out, hooked up with one of his own boys from middle school, and they started rapping together in a group called Full Logic. And around that time is when me and Amp from the Soul Council started making beats together. Um, and we made a couple beats for them, and then his partner decided to go off to grad school. And <clears throat> he got married and had a kid, <clears throat> and decided to start going to college. Um, he picked North Carolina Central University. Uh, this is after both of us had discovered Little Brother, and he was like, oh shit, my mother's teaching at this uh, school. Yeah. I gotta go here. And we had bumped in the... We had bumped in the knife a couple places here and there. So he enrolls in the class, and the first day of class, the knife says, hey, who wants to go to the office? And he was like, I'm trying to go anywhere knife's going, so let's go see this office. And the office turned out to be a studio. Nice. So they're working on a song, and I don't know how he had the, the courage to say this. But he was like, yo, you guys got room on that song? And Mike was like, I mean, yeah, we do. And we're all family in here. So if, if, you, if you go in there and spit some trash, we're going to tell you. And we're going to pull you out the song. <laughs> so he went in there and rapped one of his verses and did it in one take. And Mike was like, all right, cool. So he ran out of the booth and called me and Amp. And me and Amp were at my apartment making beats together. And he said, drop everything you're doing and come to Central. I just rapped on a night for you. And we were like, all right, man, whatever. <laughs> and we almost, we almost hung up on him. I was like, okay, sure. He was like, no, I'm dead serious. Get any kind of beats you can and come through. So we were like, all right, sure. So we drove out, played some beats for people when we got there. But when we got there, Knife was gone to go get lunch. And so there's a room full of rappers, M1 Platoon, Cooley High, um, a couple other people there that... This is years ago, so I'm having trouble remembering. A uh, dude named Focus was in there. Um, so we're running beats, and people are freestyling. And for me and Anthony, it was like, oh, shit, people are rapping on our beats. This is all right. And then Ninth walks in the room, and I was like, I, I don't want to be here. <laughs> so, you know, he's listening to some beats and tells, tells us, hey, go to, go to the next one. All right, run that one back. And then he would listen to a couple more. Go, go back three more. Let me hear this other joint. And so finally he was like, yo, you guys should come back. You, you got some talent. And we were like, oh my God, oh my God. So we just kept coming back and everybody started lumping all three of us together as actual proof. But me and Amp started out as actual proof, just making beats. But it would always be like, yo, where's that proof? And somebody would call one of us and the three of us would show up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so then he started toying around with the idea of a music label and he went out to LA and met with Stone's Throw and he called my phone and he told me, he was like, yo, I think uh, the label's gonna give me a deal. And I was like, oh shit, man, congratulations. And he was like, if you think I'm not trying to sign Act Proof, you're crazy. And I was like, excuse me? And I was making beats with Amp when he told me. So I handed the phone to Amp and I was like, hey man, talk to him. Cause I think I'm, I think I'm hearing this wrong. And so he talked to Amp, Amp hung the phone up, and both of us looked at each other like, I'm like, what? What's getting ready to happen? And so we immediately drove over to Ease, and we were like, yo, you got to rap for real. We're about to get signed. And he was like, mm, I don't know. He was like, I'm not really a solo rapper, and I'm not trying to be one. And so I was like, all right, man, fuck it, I'll rap with you. Not knowing what I was getting myself into. I'm uh-huh. thinking, oh, anybody can rap, you know? Can't be that hard, can't, can it? So we got signed, and eventually it was time for us to start making music, and I stepped into the booth, and Mike pressed that button, and he was like, yo, you ready? And I heard him in my headphones, and I instantly panicked, and I was like, oh, God, what did I sign up for? And that's my verse. It was not good, and I told myself from that point on, like, just just try to get better. Just make sure you're trying to get better every day. 
Mm. And that's just what happened. I, I, I still write every day, even though it's been five years since we put something out, because when it's time for me to go record, I want to be prepared and comfortable and you know, say what I want to say. So, I mean, that's basically it. We were just the fans that made it. Yeah. We got lucky, we got lucky oh, wow. and we in the right place at the right time. I, li- I really like like that last line you just said. <laughs> I, I love that, when, uh, when, when, yeah, well, I love when people who are fans, like, I think that that's such an important thing for you to just, for you to be a fan and a lover of the culture. I think that that's the first step in you being able to really, really do well and be, 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 be good. Right. Yeah, there's still times where we meet certain people and, you know, we'll kind of play it cool while we're meeting them, but then we'll walk back and like, yo, that's fucking Raekwon. That shit is crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll pull away from we'll pull away from everybody else and just kind of fan out for a second. Like, I cannot believe yeah. this shit. I used to I used to do my homework to only build for Cuban links, and you know. Yeah. But actually, just, went know, to a show with my homework. cousin one time, and, and we saw EPMD um, here at a place that's now closed down in Chicago, but. It was a small stage, and then like they came out to the audience and they walked past us. They was like, "Hey, how y'all doing?" We were talking. I was like, "Oh my God, it's Eric and Parrish making dollars!" Like, <laughs> I was like, we were, like, we were that, so fanned out. Like after they left, we were like, "Oh my God!" You ain't say it like that, did you? Like, we still, we still walk and hang out in the crowd before we go on or, or after we go on because we are still fans and like there's some people that have said to us like yo what are you guys doing out here it's like listening to music just like you you know yeah. I don't want to yeah. be backstage when somebody's performing especially if I'm a fan I'm, I'm trying to go to the trying to go yeah. in the crowd being backstage is not or on the side of the stage it's cool but it's not the same as being in the crowd amongst people that care you know that's true it's it's just different and i'd rather be in the crowd <sighs> like you're really profound seriously that's dope yeah. that last thing you <laughs> just said even, still, like that like that right there even what you just <laughs> said like i'd rather be in the crowd it's almost like um like you're saying even you know even at any given time, I'm never going to be just above everybody. I'm I'm always going to be one of the people. That's dope. That's really dope. Yeah. It's, you know, it's funny you it's, say that because I've been I was thinking about that uh, too. Like, hip hip hop don't have a lot of fan, it don't have enough fans like it used to. I don't think. Mm-hmm. Like everybody yeah, got everybody, more. Yeah, you got more people that's like trying to be music. rappers or hip hop artists than yep. are fans. Right. Or or if not if not an artist than a critic or a, a manager or whatever. Hey, like, hey, uh-huh. hey yep. don't claim the critics <laughs> on this show. <laughs> I mean, but critic, critics are needed, but nobody, nobody wants to just be a fan anymore. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I attribute that to people waking up and realizing like, hey, I can, I can actually be a part of this. And yeah. I think that's cool. I really do appreciate that because that's how I got started. But at the same time, I still, I still want to be, I still want to keep that fan side of me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we're like that too because we're fans that are critics. We're definitely fan. We're long time fans. You know, I don't know if you, if you ever heard any of our other shows, but this, like we sat around doing this in my classroom when I was their teacher every day. Mm-hmm. And nobody paid us. It, it didn't matter. It didn't even matter. This is what we did. We love the culture. It's just what we do. It's no. I I say that I'm a fan, but God, I can't tell you the last time I actually listened to music because the artist side of me thinks I don't want to sound like anybody else. Yeah. And I'm scared. I'm scared to listen to somebody because I, I don't want to. I don't want to do the. Oh, that's what they want to hear. Hmm. I can do that, you know? It, it's hard for me to balance that. Like, I just downloaded Bar Exam 4. Yeah. 
fucking voice is rapping his ass off. <laughs> That's a lot to take in. <laughs> Which, I mean, I didn't expect anything less, but at the same time, I'm like, hold on. Don't start trying to be Royce. Right. I, I yeah. use it as inspiration, but at the same time, it's like, still say who you are. And I have to be careful about who I listen to when I'm writing because I don't want to, like, if I listen to Drake when I'm writing, I might start thinking, like, say something catchy. Yeah. Or don't say it like this, kind of say it like he would say it. So I got to be careful mm-hmm. about what mm-hmm. I take in when I'm trying to be creative. Yeah. I think I think all of us struggle with that because I, I can't. Yeah. I can't take in too much like even with my writing I can't read too much like if I'm writing plays or poetry I can't read too much of certain things or in golf like I purposely will stay away from reading my favorite poets if I'm going to start writing well at least I don't yeah, want to sound like anybody else but myself yeah that right, means, they're that your means favorites sense. for a reason yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've heard I heard a lot of people that do it that way me me personally because me and Aunt Rat too so but like the way I use it is like I listen to a lot of people's stuff and if I hear like a lot of, of a certain thing going on I'm just like alright I know what to steer away from I use it like that more so hmm. that's a healthy way to use it too yeah, I, I look at it I look at it like like you said like inspiration but at the same time too I'm heavy on creativity so the way someone is doing it might not suit what I want to do creatively you know, yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Try not to let it. Try not to let it influence what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So can I pause and give our homework <laughs> before Uh-oh. we um, go, go right ahead? So, um, of course, we want y'all to join us next week. And next week, uh, we'll be talking about cultural appropriation. The cultural appropriation oh, yeah. show. So everybody, so everybody get up on your definitions of cultural appropriation and watch all your videos of Rachel Delazal and, <laughs> <laughs> and and Kylie and Kendall Jenner and apparently I just might read I just might read Rachel's book. Oh, you Lord. Want to read her? I just might I just might read it to see what she has to say. Whatever. Oh, I'm going to tell you right now, a big fat nothing. <laughs> I'll go ahead and read her book. She's going to tell you what it's like to be black. You know, I mean, she made the, I mean, look, Ann made the man like six hours of, of his life stand back. Six hours of his life stand back. After he reads that book, he can't get back. But if you want to go I've ahead wasted, and do that. I wasted six hours on worse. Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, it's so dope to have you on the show today. I, I appreciate you guys asking. Oh man, I'm not doing anything. I'm. It's Sunday. I'm. I would have been playing video games or taking a nap <laughs> or something. So. Definitely. Speaking speaking of video games, when we gonna have the when we gonna have the nerd rap conversation? Oh, we definitely need to have that one. Yeah, we're doing it. We definitely are. The nerd, nerd, nerd rap conversation? Yeah. Nerd, yeah. Core. nerd core. Yeah, nerd core. Mm. Mm-hmm. The nerd core mm. show. There's a lot of talent, a lot of talent repping nerd core. <laughs> How you like I, our show? I don't show know if so I can. I like it. I'm, I'm, I mean, I wouldn't have agreed to do it if I didn't like it. Cool. Mm, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you up. very much. And and I don't get asked to do a lot of stuff because, like I said, we've been out of the we've been out of the the mix for a while. So, mm-hmm. I, I this is probably more fun for me than it was for for you guys. I doubt that. Well, every every now and then, every now and then, I put some act poof on. I was listening to uh, the Millennium Falcon joint you did with Chewie the other day. Oh God, I, man. I, I didn't even realize you produced until you said you said you produced that. That joint is dope. Man. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I gotta set my uh, beat computer up again because I need to start sending him beats for part two. Nice. Oh, snap. 
exclusive announcement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we've been talking about it for a couple of years, but like I moved to Minnesota and then I moved back to North Carolina. Then, I mean, I also got married. I got, uh, I mean, just, you know, random stuff in life happens and you got to start yeah. prioritizing things. And unfortunately, music had to sit on the back burner. But, I mean, what he's done before he and I got together and since Chewy is, I don't he's even think people one. realize how talented he really is. He, he's he can another do one he's more yeah, he's yeah. dope. But, uh, nah, no, 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 I don't want to do that because I know you guys are trying to wrap up. Yeah. Okay, but, uh, what, you got, what you got? What you got? What you got? Uh, um, just the music he makes now. Some people would consider that more trap type music, but he's still rapping. And I hope that his audience continues to grow instead of some people being like, mm, this isn't the Chewy I want, you know? Okay. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I'm looking forward was, to it. I, I, I just hope his core fans who started out with him can still appreciate can what stay he's with him. Yeah. Right. Cool. That was it. Cool. Alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So dope. So dope. Wonderful. So <laughs> and we didn't have to do not one impending doom. Don't say it. Just don't. Okay? <laughs> don't don't trip it. Okay? Don't just pull oh, wait, back. He, we gotta explain. He, was, gotta explain he was all over the freaking planet this whole week. I'm like, what is he doing? Why is he making a round? What is he making right now? I, that's what I was asking. Is, is he putting out an album? So, or like, something? so go ahead and explain. I'm sorry. Go ahead and explain. Well, we've come to the conclusion that. But don't that say his name. Don't say his name. Don't say his name. Can I say his, can I say his government? <laughs> no. A certain, a, certain, a certain music mogul is the hip hop equivalent of Lex Luthor. It all kind of started mm. to decline with this person rise to prominence. And okay. it's like a rule, wherever his name is mentioned, there's a button press. <laughs> but impending doom. Dun, dun, yes. dun, dun. <laughs> and well, just so you understand, let me put it in context. Um, AKA the shiny suit man. Nobody I knew it. it. I, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> But I have a good friend that actually says like that 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 in his circles he's actually called like El Diablo. Oh, that's yeah. Pretty deep. That's pretty deep. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. So what is the impending doom? Uh, <laughs> that would be this. <laughs> <laughs> what was what's the impending doom when it comes to him? Well, I mean, he's a nefarious. When he walks in the building, it's like, it's like, um, it's like, you know, death and destruction ensues. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like, Either of careers or like literally, maybe. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> uh, that's not a debate, but you know, some people claim that both of those things are true. All of those things are true. Some of those things are true. One of those things are true. We don't know. He's definitely at least on some gangster shit. Definitely yeah. at least. Yeah. Kaiser Soze is what I call him. <laughs> Kaiser Soze. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to respond to that. But <laughs> Go listen to some old bad boy records. You'll see. <sighs> you know, YouTube searches and, and things of that nature can lead you down rabbit holes. I, I mean, I'm, everybody's been there and heard things, so I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, but that that's pretty much our show, except for the dumb shit we talk at the end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thanks everybody for joining us. And um, school is officially 